supporting, go ahead. Our mission, Helping Parents Heal is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting bereaved parents to become shining light parents by providing support and resources to aid in the healing process. We go a step beyond other groups by allowing the open discussion of spiritual experiences and evidence for the afterlife in a non-dogmatic way. Affiliate groups welcome everyone regardless of religious or non-religious background. Attendance today at this meeting is voluntary and we are here for the benefit of learning from and sharing with other parents whose child has passed away. It is understood that our discussions are intended to be confidential and not designed to replace traditional therapy or spiritual counseling. However, these Zoom meetings are very helpful to parents all around the world, and they are posted on YouTube so that affiliate members who are not able to attend this meeting live can also watch. Helping Parents Heal offers a wide variety of speakers to allow parents to be informed about many possible ways to heal, to connect with their children, and to learn about the afterlife. The views expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect those of Helping Parents Heal, and we ask that you take from their presentations whatever may benefit you personally. Welcome, everyone. Thank you again, Christine. We're so excited. We are thrilled. And I just want to say that, again, I, I know I said this at the beginning, Christine has been with me almost the whole time along my healing journey. She's a friend of Lori Savoy's. So Lori introduced Christine to me. And many of you know Lori because she's our secretary and she also has spoken to Helping Parents Heal. She's been in some of the movies as well. But um, anyway, uh, she is absolutely wonderful. She's come to speak to our group before uh, on these Zoom meetings. And I'm just going to go ahead and read her bio very quickly so that you know a little bit more about her. Christine Salter is a psychic and medium, spiritual teacher, and energy healer who works in the loving service of the divine. Christine developed her natural gifts as a psychic medium and healer as an adult after being immersed in a holistic healing school. She was contacted by angels in 2004 and learned to channel and heal with them. As she continued to expand her gifts, it became clear that her soul's mission was to come forth as a medium and help people connect with loved ones in spirit and heal the trauma that may be that they may be carrying. Christine is an evidentiary, evidentiary medium and an angel messenger who helps people heal their lives and reclaim their light that was dimmed by the passing of a loved one. And her website, if you want to learn more about her, <clears throat> her website is www.christinesalter.com. I'll put that in the chat box. But without further ado, please join me in welcoming Christine Salter. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, of course, you know, I love connecting with you guys and your kids and it's just such a passion of mine. And so anytime Elizabeth is like, Christine, would you do this? I'm like, yes, absolutely. Um, so pendulum uh what we're going to talk about tonight and the um to talk about uh auras some and so i know we have an hour and i know i like to jam a lot of information in in a short <laughs> amount of time and so i do want to um get started pretty quickly um in working with the pendulum so i know I kind of swiped through a little bit and I see that there's lots and lots and lots and lots of beautiful faces here. So as much as I would like to be able to, you know, answer individually, I can't. So I'm just going to have to approach it from um, generalized information for you guys. Of course, I'm available. You can find me on social media. So if you're like, I'm really struggling with my pendulum, reach out, ask me. Um, I love to help parents. I love to help people. This is my passion. This is my life purpose. And so I saw that Irene had posted a link for a pendulum and it's beautiful amethyst. And I hope that everybody has um, a toy to play with, a tool to play with. Um, I learned to use a pendulum way back in 2000 <laughs> when I started my journey uh, for healing. Um, I started my Awakens journey back in 1987 when I was 12. Um, so this has always been something that um, 
I've been comfortable with. It's really been my journey. One of the things before we get going that I do like to talk about and I do like to share because a lot of mediums, you know, were born wide open and awake and they always talk to grandma and all these different things. And I always like to tell people that's not my journey. I didn't open up until I was 26. And I share that because I want people to understand that even if you haven't had an experience yet, or you, you know, your intuition isn't wide open or your channel's not wide open, it doesn't mean that you can't do it. I believe every single person can do this. It's innate, it's an innate ability. Um, and I encourage strongly everybody to continue to open up, connect with your kids. I know every single one of you, your kids made sure <laughs> You were parked here tonight uh, with us so you could learn to work with as a tool and it'll be a tool that you can have an immediate confirmation. So maybe you've worked with automatic writing or something along those lines and you're working on opening yourselves up. You can use the pendulum as a tool just to confirm that what you're getting is what they're trying to say. So working with Christine, how do I like to approach this? We're going to keep it as simple as possible. We can make things really difficult, and that's just not the way I like to handle things. So, this is hold it up here. So, this is my pendulum. Some of you guys may have this one from the first conference. This is a um, different crystals. Um, most pendulums you can use a necklace as long as it has a good weight on it. You want to have generally, I would say, a metal chain because it's going to be. Um, conducting energy. And I already hear the question. So I'm going to answer it before anybody even needs to ask it. I've had people say, and this is just, of course, my take on it. And even before we get started, I guess spirits like Christine, we're just going to address it right now. <laughs> I've had people say that it's your subconscious that's answering you through the pendulum. And I will tell you after years and years and years and years and years of working with a pendulum, that it is not your subconscious. And let me just share my quick little story. <laughs> then we'll get started. I have lots of stories. Way back when, when I first started um, healing work, I was working on um, creating a healing tincture for somebody. And I'd ask my guides to come in and the room was just perfect, which we'll talk about later for the auras. And I used a pendulum just to see, is this, is, am I getting it right? Am I hearing it right? And I literally, with my physical eyes, saw a hand grab my pendulum and move it. And I was like, this is not coming from me. It's spirit. Spirit can touch it. Spirit can manipulate it. So whoever's egos might get a little crazy tonight going, I think it's just me. The self-doubt stuff comes in. <sighs> Miss Christine is telling you right now is not coming from you and your kids are going to show you. So your divine tool, right? That's what this is. It's an energetic tool. One of the very first things, thank you. See, you'll see me start talking to the air because that's how it works. I work with Archangel Michael. He is the protector angel. And the way that I work, whether you believe him or not or whatever, I always have been trained that you ask for the highest level guide to be available to you. I want you to ask your, so in your head, right? We keep it simple. You can ask Archangel Michael. So Archangel Michael, would you come be with me as I work with the pendulum? Or you could say, um, I need a highest level guide available to come be with me as I work with the pendulum and also ask your kids to come in. That's how we get started. Your pendulum is an energetic tool. So we want to make sure that it's clear, high vibe in. So we're getting really um, good, clear answers coming through. So the simple way to do it is in your palms, you have chakras, you have energy centers in your palms. So to clear your chakra or your pendulum, you can literally just place it in your palm, put the other hand over it. I like to kind of cuff my hands together. Using your imagination, I want you to imagine you have white light coming out of your palms into the pendulum. And again, it's all done in your imagination. That's how all psychic stuff works. You might notice your palms start to get warm. If you do, that's feeling some energy. I like to kind of shake it like dice a little bit. I imagine maybe it's a little muddy. I'm just going to shake off the energy a little bit. And this is also tuning it to your vibration. You'll find if you work with different pendulums that they may communicate differently. And we're going to learn in just a second what that might look like. So we're going to trust ourselves. And when it feels like, okay, ding, we're done, then your pendulum is going to be ready. So I want you to, you can try different ways. 
I hold my pendulum in my dominant hand because it's just as more comfortable for me, but you can try also your non-dominant hand. I like to hold it on the little ball because it needs to be able to be easily moving. And we're gonna ask our pendulum a couple questions because we wanna know how our pendulum communicates. So we're first going to say, and we're gonna, you can say it out loud to it, just say, show me yes. And you're gonna hold it and you're gonna pay attention and see what your pendulum starts to do, right? <laughs> I love it. I see Patty's face on there like, oh my gosh, it starts to move. It was so fun at the conference watching the parents go, I can't believe this is happening. Okay, so if it's not moving real big, just say make it bigger and then be patient. So see if you can get a real good movement. Mine right now is going front to back and that's my yes. Yours will probably be different. I see some pendulums move in there. Perfect. And I just kind of like to just jerk on it a little bit and say, stop. And then we're going to say, show me no. And then see what happens. Show me no. And it might kind of like jingle and jangle around a little bit. It's trying to find its rhythm because your kids are moving it and they're figuring out how to get this moving. It's all energy. It's always fun. I see Elizabeth's face. She's like, <laughs> right, this is fun. And while we're doing this, if you get the tingling on the top of your head or you have a sense that your kid's there, they're like, hello, they love to play with this. Okay, so hopefully you have a good, a good yes and a good no. Now, I like to ask it a question that I know the answer to and see if it answers correctly. When I normally will say something like, my name is Bob. My name is Bob. And see what it does. And my pendulum says, no, it's not. So see if yours answers. You can answer a question that's a yes and just see if it answers. I just like to try and trick mine <laughs> to see. Let's see, are we in tune? Is it paying attention? Okay, so those of you that are getting no movement, um, I'm gonna ask you to take a nice deep breath and you're just gonna, I'm gonna have you go back to the show me yes. If you want to make it move a tiny bit to get it moving, it will find its rhythm. So you can do that if it's not moving, okay? All right. So I want you to um, ask your child to come forward. So just in your head, ask them to come forward and then ask them if they're here and let's just see what the pendulum does. Ask if they're here. See if it says yes. Again, you may get tingles and touch and taps and your nose might itch like mine does. They like to make me look a little crazy because I itch my nose. The kids love it. They think it's so funny to mess with Miss Christine. Okay, there we go, itchy nose. All right. Okay, I see a lot of you guys getting some movement. If tears are coming up, that's beautiful and perfect. We just let those tears out because this is really healing. Okay. Um, ask them if they're a certain age and you know whether or not that is correct. So ask them, you know, ask them, um, say maybe, are you eight years old? So we want to ask questions. Thank you, Archangel Michael. We want to ask questions that are very specific because if it's, are you, you know, what are you doing? You can't ask that kind of question with the pendulum. It has to be something that can be an easy yes and an easy no. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the lights just flashed in the room. I love it. The kids are like, yes, they're here. They're paying attention. Okay. So you can ask, you know, are you 19 if they are and see what it answers. And you can ask if they're a different age and just, just see, see what happens. 
And I don't know who's getting touched, but I just feel it. I know some of you guys are getting, they're all over you. Okay. All right. So I know that you guys have questions that you want to ask the kids, but let's start with the first one. Are you happy? And ask them to hold up your pendulum and just ask, are you happy? And we're going to try and hold our arm as still as we can. Just let the energy move it. Um, so there's a question where to get a pendulum from. You can usually get them at maybe a local psychic shop or metaphysical shop. You certainly can get them on Amazon <laughs> also. You just look Etsy, depends on how pretty or how um, interesting of a pendulum you want. Okay. You got to know that they're not happy. Okay. So let me just, let me see how to ask the question. Ask them if they're at peace. Let's ask our kids if they're at peace. Oh, all right, Renata. So we had to, so the rest of you guys ask your kids if they're at peace. What I want you to do is I want you to ask your pendulum, show me yes, and see which direction it goes. And then a show me no, and see what direction it goes. Peace was a yes. Okay, perfect. So you know the sign that you always think, do I need to put my other palm underneath? I don't think so. If it feels right to you, we're going to trust ourselves intuitively. Like this is okay. I just want to run some energy through your pendulums to clear them. Okay. So, you know, that big old sign that you're like, Oh, I just know it's from them. I want you to ask, was that from you? And hold it up and ask is that from you. <laughs> Dina says a light flashed again. Yeah, because your kids are energy and they're like, I'm right here. They love to play with electricity. Perfect. I love the comments. Okay. Some of you guys want to know, are they, are they happy with maybe something that you've done for them since their transition? Ask that question. Do they like what decisions you've made for them? Yeah, and if those tears are coming up, it's okay. You just let those out. Those are happy healing tears. And I know this can get a little emotional for you guys, and that's okay. Using the pendulum is a pretty simple tool. Okay, so get emotional and your heart is racing. Oh, I love all these questions all of a sudden. <laughs> okay, I, can't keep, I can't keep track. I'll have, I'll have to come back, I, I think, in a, a little bit and uh, have um, Elizabeth or Irene answer some of these questions. So, okay. Um, let's see. So I'm just asking Archangel Michael, what other questions would be? So now someone's touching my head. It's Elizabeth's son. <laughs> all of a sudden, he's over here touching my head. That's funny. Okay. Um, let's see. For those of you that are sitting maybe with some guilt, I think that if you have a question in regards to maybe something that happened at the end for them at their transition, if you want to go ahead and ask that, or if you have like a burning question, like just make sure that you word it in a way that it can be an easy yes or no, because that's really the big challenge. It gets too muddy or they can't answer it because it's not specific enough. Maybe you saw movement in the room and you're like, oh, I wonder if that was them. Or you walked out and all the kitchen cabinets were open. <laughs> Did you do that? <laughs> what are these things going on? Did you send that license plate? You know, are you my guide? 
there's lots of questions that you can ask them. I love working with the pendulum. I think it's a lot of fun and it really gives you the confidence because you can't get it swinging. And I don't care, I'm sorry, I don't care what other people think. This is your kids. And you may even feel like even like a little tug or something, a kind of a pull on your, on your pendulum. If you wanna ask them if they're looking after somebody, you can do that. Again, it's gonna be yes and no type questions. I know, I just wanna like scroll. I just wanna look at your, your guys' faces and see these, the pendulums moving because it's, it's fun. <laughs> There's something so fun for me when people have this first experience. They're like, oh my gosh, this is wild. This is, this is amazing. This is a great tool. And to me, this is a tool. And of course, um, as a teacher in doing this kind of work, I, I like a tool, but I always want you to continue to expand your ability. Um, if you have another loved one in spirit that you would like to ask to come in, you can do that. And so we can change the channels, so to speak. I guess that's how spirit wants me to say it. Say maybe mom is in spirit or somebody else. And if you don't, that's fine. If you want to keep working with your kids, asking yes and no questions, that's great. But you would simply just ask them. I know I have all these questions. Elizabeth, you have to go through questions soon. So you just literally in your head, just ask them to step forward. And then you can, you know how the pendulum communicates. They know how it communicates. And you can just ask, are, is so-and-so here? You know, are you at the pendulum? And see see what it does. So if you have somebody else, yes, through energy. Everything's energy. This is energy. It's all intention. And that's how they can move things, put things across your path. You know, there's a ladybug in your living room. You're like, where the heck did that come from? And they just laugh because they're all powerful. <laughs> so if somebody says, um, all right, you know, is so somebody says their dad. So, you know, ask them if they're here. And then you can just say, you know, show me yes. And then see if it changes a little bit. Like my pendulum just likes to start going automatically. And then you can also ask them yes or no questions. And the question will come up, well, how do I discern? How do I know who it is? And what I will tell you is your very first thought that comes in of who it is, you're just going to run with that. We try to make things too difficult and, and it really is going to be the first things that are coming to you. So, so, and I do want to, I do want to play the, with the aura stuff too, but I'm trying to be so mindful of my time. Um, I want to do one more thing and then I want, um, I want to answer some of the questions that are popping up. Um, but this is my favorite thing to show you guys. So call your kids back in and ask them to take, come to the pendulum again. And this will probably be the way that you end your pendulum communication with your kids. And I want you to ask your kids to show you, I love you through the pendulum and see what it does. See how it starts to move. Say, so show me, I love you. It should be a different movement from the yes or no. It's their energy that's manipulating it. It's their energy that's moving it. And a lot of people get big circles. And you can say, show me big and see what happens. And it might just start totally whipping around. And if it's not doing a whole lot, say, make it big. <laughs> I kind of yell at them a little bit. Make it big so I can see it. So when you tell your kids, I love you, you can get out your pendulum and you can get it back through your pendulum from them that they love you too. And I always love it. I always love giving you that little piece because nothing means more, right? From hearing from your kids, 
and hearing from your kids and seeing, having a visual representation because this is a yes and it's not a no. I always like, <laughs> Christine pull her energy back so I don't feel everybody else's because they just like, I want to hug. I want to hug all of you. So you have a fun little tool to play with and to work with and to connect with your kids. And so you're having a hard day. I want you to get out the pendulum and I want you to get yourself grounded and present as much as you can, because sometimes emotions are too much. I want you to clear the energy of your pendulum. So it's good. It's a divination tool so that it's good and, and clear and, and high vibing. And then again, these are my steps. Archangel Michael or high level guide come in and be with me as I communicate with my child, call in your child. I like to do the show me yes, show me no every time um, just to make sure that I'm understanding the pendulum. You can ask them all kinds of questions. Just make sure that they're more yes or no. You can't say, so what are you doing in the universe? They're like, you have a pendulum. Like, let's talk. <laughs> Let's work on getting your channel open and I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing. So it's just a, it's a good um, tool for that immediate, you know, heartfelt like, okay, they're here and I can breathe and, and we're, we're doing good. Um, you may get a, a nudge. Uh, you might, you, know, you might hear in your head, pendulum, pendulum. You're like, why am I thinking about the pendulum? And the kids are like, cause I'm trying to get you to get out the pendulum so we can talk a little bit. <laughs> cause I don't know about you, but you know, my kids are sarcastic and, and their personality and everything still, you know, shines through. So um, the pendulum itself over time can get muddy. So let me just give you a couple tips on the pendulum and I call it energetically muddy. So if you're trying to use it and it's just like, this is making no sense whatsoever, that is to make sure that uh, you need to make sure you go back and you clear it out clear the energy again with crystals. You can put them outside in the moonlight and that'll help clear them. You can clear them on the full moon. I'm an energy worker. I know we're energetic beings. I know we have energy that comes out of our palms. So I just literally like to visualize energy moving through. I'm getting hot all of a sudden. You Reiki practitioners, you know, you can move energy and, and you can clear things out. Um, I'm just asking spirit, if there's anything else with the pendulum. I know there's, um, a bunch of questions. So Elizabeth or Irene, do you want to run through some questions at all? Yes, that and would it, be wonderful. Okay. Oh, okay, hold on. Go ahead. Spirit jumps in, right? It doesn't have to have a crystal on it. Um, it just needs to be something with some weight. Here's another pendulum I have. That it's just metal. I like metal because um, it will conduct, you know, energy because it's metallic, but uh, it doesn't have to be. It just needs to have a good enough weight, but not so heavy that your kids are like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to get this thing moving because they're the ones that are shifting the energy. So sorry, someone's on my head. Don't mind me. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> there are so many people that are using a, a necklace that a son gave her that is an amethyst necklace, which is just perfect. Or her daughter's fingerprint necklace is another. Joe is, uh, let's see, that's Dina who's saying that. Um, Cindy is asking, can you use or uh, an alphabet chart for them to give sentences? Is that something that you- Yeah, so um, there are such things as a pendulum chart. Um, I, you can buy a pendulum chart book. Like I have a book that I used a long time ago. And um, so you can use the pendulum with the kids. You could use the pendulum with your guides um, if you're wanting like other kind of knowledge. But yeah, you can create what's called a pendulum map. You could probably, I'm, of course you can, right? You can get one off of YouTube or online and they can, they can spell stuff out um, for you. It's funny because in my experience with the kids and work with the pendulums, they do want like more communication. So sometimes they're just like, this is slow. So if you start getting nudges to, you know, expand how you're communicating with them, this is kind of a slow process, but yeah, you can have them spell things out. You could have them spell out. I love you. So basically it looks kind of like a sun ray and there's like a center point and it will just move by itself to the different um, letters. So yeah, you could have a conversation with them that way. It's just a little bit of a slower process. I wouldn't, you know, ask like a giant question or it could be, <laughs> it could be an hour before you get the answer or they might get a little frustrated. Um, at the slowness of it, but <laughs> I, 
it is something that I think is good um, if you want a little more in-depth answers, so. Well, Candy is asking, I love this question, where should I keep the pendulum? And by the way, this was amazing. I did not expect such a powerful response, crying happy tears. So Aww. is there a special place <laughs> that we should be keeping these, the pendulum? Um, I would say certainly like this is your sacred tool. So if you have a sacred place, um, spirits tell me that you could easily keep it where you keep their stuff. So you could, like I just have like a little box, but you could have something or a little bag for it. So specifically with crystals, you wanna make sure that, um, you know, they're not kept out in the sun and, and things like that. But I want you to consider this as a sacred communication tool. So have it in something that, you know, it's gonna be safe and protected. Um, I don't think that there's, I don't think there's anything other special, but I feel like the kids are saying, you know, put it, put it um, where their pictures are, put it where all their mementos and, and stuff like that are. So you, okay. So what I'm hearing, <laughs> put it in plain sight. Don't put it away in a drawer because they want you to see it and go, I should get that out. I should work on communicating. So they want it like by their picture, just as a reminder to make this a regular practice, right? This is a practice, there's no perfection in it. You could do this every single day if you wanted. Um, I would say maybe probably once a week so you can just kind of like process the answers and the energy and not be so dependent on it. Because of course me, you know, I want you to open up your, your other abilities, but kids are telling me to tell you, you put it by their picture so you use it regularly. So there you go. That's a great answer. And I just <laughs> want to tell you some of the things people are saying. Adriana is saying, my mind is blown. Honestly, I just came to watch and learn and then decided to try. Beverly Wilson is saying, I am in awe. I have clear yes, no, and I love you. Thank you so much. Um, and Rose is saying, I just told my daughter I love her. And I literally felt like she pulled the chain hard to tell me she loves me too. This is so amazing. Thank you. Um, there's a whole bunch of responses like this, but there are some people who said that they didn't get anything in the beginning uh, or that the chain was just vibrating. Could you maybe just tell us a little bit about what to do and why that might be happening like that, Christine? Yeah, I would. I would. So a couple of things that I would make sure is that I'm grounded and I'm present. So if your emotions are really heavy, it might be a little harder to be focused enough because this is everything is with intention, right? Like we're like holding a sacred space. You're inviting your kids to come in. Um, it, if it's the first time that they've tried to use the pendulum there. So it gives you the picture. I don't remember. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie ghost, probably most of you have. So when the, when the man is in the subway and he can like kick the can, he's had practice and he knows how to manipulate and move energy. And Patrick Swayze is like trying to figure it out. So if you're, so this is the visual that spirits giving me to tell you. So if it's just kind of moving, it's like they're working on it and learning how to work with it. So I'm hearing patience. <laughs> you can move it a little bit to get it moving for them and then just see what happens. If it's still happening, I would do your darndest to not get super frustrated and be like, this doesn't work for me because that's not the case. It just may take a little more patience to get them to figure out how to get it to move. That's amazing. So um, Irene is re reminding me, and this is true, we need to let you talk about auras or we won't have enough time. I know. <laughs> um, we'll have you back if that's okay, but maybe we can move on to auras so that people will know mm -hmm. how to recognize them, which would be wonderful. Oh, yeah. So auras and the ability to see auras. Um, so spirit's going to back me up. Don't mind me. I just talk and Archangel Michael tells me what to say and they shift my whatever. Um, so an aura is the energetic field around the human body. And everybody has an aura because we are energetic beings kind of stuffed into this little piece of us stuffed into a human experience while the bigger part of us is still on the other side. And so we have an energetic field around us. And I'm, most people have probably heard the term aura. 
And what I really want to share with you guys is a, is something that I learned a long time ago in how to open your third eye more. So you might actually be able to see auras and it's a great psychic development tool. So when you see an aura, whether it's in your imagination or with your physical eyes, and I want to work with you guys for physical eyes tonight, um, it comes through your clairvoyance. And so it's your clear seeing, um, I believe everybody has all clairs. We just have some that are more, um, predominant. I happen to be pretty clairvoyant. So I get a lot of pictures and such in my mind. So the way that I describe the colors when we're, what we're looking for. So I want to walk you through a little experience and it may work tonight and it may not. Um, my motto is patience, practice, and perseverance. And so when you're learning to do these things, if it doesn't work the first time or the second time, it doesn't mean you can't do it. I didn't think I was medium spirit, you know, let me know that I was incorrect. So, <laughs> so it may take some practice with this, but let me tell you when it happens, you're going to be like, oh, I'll keep my potty mouth to myself. It's so really, it's amazing and cool when it happens. So what I want you to do, spirits tell me, we're going to rub our hands together. We're just going to create a little extra energy in our hands. The ideal way to do this, and this will be for later. So those of you that watch the video later or come back and go, what did she say about these auras? I don't remember. The ideal way is to have a softly lit room with soft light behind you. That will be the ideal way to see this, okay? But we're just gonna go with whatever you have right now. So we're gonna get a little extra energy in our hands. I want you to put your fingers into a shape of a pyramid like this, okay? You're gonna bring your hands about 12 to 18 inches away from your face. I mean, you can't really see my hands very well. <laughs> And what I want you to do is I want you to look past your hands. So you're not gonna look at your hands, you're gonna soften your gaze and you're gonna look past your hands, kind of at the wall or a spot, maybe three to six feet past where you're at. And I want you to have your hands in your field of vision, but just kind of look past them. And what I want you to do so I'm going to breathe, first of all, because I know we all get tense and tight when we're learning new things. So we're going to breathe. We're going to soften our gaze. We're going to look at our hands, but past our hands. And what I want you to start to look for is you're going to keep your hands up at me. <laughs> they may get tired and that's okay. I want you to allow it to come into your awareness, maybe like a, a silvery shimmer that you might start to notice around your fingers, kind of like when there's heat in the desert and you have that, that mirage type energy, silvery going on. And so we're just going to keep our hands out and we're just kind of looking past them. Some of you may start to see it already and maybe you do, maybe you don't, and that's okay. But the next step is going to be once you get that silver shimmer, so you're going to slowly spread your hands apart about three inches, slowly moving your fingers apart, but you're going to continue looking at the same spot on the wall that you've been looking at. And what will happen as your brain starts to get used to seeing the silvery shimmer, and again, it may take a while and it's okay. As you move your hands apart, what you'll start to notice is around your fingers, you'll see some color start to show up. It might be really soft at first, but the quality of the color that I want you to be on the lookout for will be like if you saw a rainbow in the sky. So you can see through it, but it's really bright and vibrant. And there's a lot of different colors that you can see. And again, this may take some practice. I was in a, a class for probably two hours working on it, but I was able to see the color pop around my hands. And so this is just a, an exercise in you being able to do this for yourself. So I want, again... And if anybody has seen it, or if you see the shimmer, if you could just like put a little comment. So I know if anybody's able to see it. Um, so we put our, we're gonna energize. So yeah, so we got the silver shiver, shimmer. And, oh, somebody saw mint, perfect. So we get stuck at, I think that's the, that's the problem. We get stuck with, ooh, I saw the shimmer, I saw my aura and I'm like, no, one step further, you pull your hands apart and you'll start see lots of people. <laughs> okay. So put your hands in that triangle again, kind of up and out, look past your hands, look at the wall, 
or off in the distance, soften your gaze, seeing your hands, but not looking at them. Waiting to see if you see kind of a shimmer, kind of a silvery shimmer energy around your hands. When you get that, that's when I want you to start to pull your fingers apart, still looking past them. And then you'll start to notice some color pop just right around your fingers or your whole hands might glow. How high do your hands need to be? I would say um, maybe 45 degrees, maybe just kind of up more so. So you're not looking at anything. So they're just kind of up a little bit. And then if you don't see it, then put your fingers together and just kind of pull them back apart a little bit again. So some of you are starting to see it, which is really cool. And, and we're going to breathe because <laughs> we're always going to come back to breathing because we get so involved and, and it is, um, can be a little stressful or we just kind of hold our energy in. So we're seeing lots of different colors showing up and that's, that's a lot of fun. Did I tell you what color I saw around my hands? I don't think I told you guys. So when I started as a massage therapist in 2000 and I learned how to do this, I saw, and it was crazy. And I see all these different colors, green. It was just emerald green around my hands. And it made sense because I was doing so much hands-on healing work with people that that was the color that I was, you know, sending out into people also. And I have since my color has changed. My color now is blue <laughs> around my hands. And um, it's pretty interesting that your, your aura colors can change. Um, and I do have a little, I do have a little note here because you don't remember all of um, the colors. So I'm just gonna kind of read through it a little bit and add like little pieces of information that I have. So if you're finding yellow, um, it can be positivity, joy, learning new things are harmonious. And when I was studying this, I understood that students would have, sorry, I'm gonna touch my head again. <laughs> I would have a lot, of, uh, people would have a lot of yellow that were students. And so if you're finding a lot of yellow around you, you're kind of in a learning phase and um, learning mode. Um, orange is vitality, creativity. Somebody who's adventurous will have a lot of orange energy. Um, red, so red, isn't, um, sometimes people will ask, well, does that mean they're angry? Um, sometimes people do see red because they're angry, but in general, um, grounded, centered, somebody who's passionate, um, there could be some anger, um, but I always like to focus more on the, the good, good traits that you can see. So if you find that you have red around you and you all of a sudden have a project that you're really passionate about, that energy will show up um, in your, the color will show up in your energy. Spirit's talking to me. I'm like, hold on. <laughs> My secretary is talking to me. I'm like, hold on a second. I'll, I'll throw that in. Um, purple, spiritual, right? We always look at purple as a very spiritual um, color, a visionary, a dreamer, or a psychic. So if you are finding that color around your hands, um, and I will, I know, I have two ideas that I need to share with you. I will tell you also how to see it around other people, but I really think it's so cool when you can see it on yourself. Um, blue, calm, intuitive, healing, and teacher. So if you're finding there's a lot of blue energy, um, I think a lot of spiritual teachers either have blue or they have like an indigo blue color. And I don't know who's seeing my aura right now, but spirit just told me that somebody is seeing your aura. So I have to acknowledge it to whoever it is that... <laughs> My aura must have just popped out, so I hear it, so I'll say it. <laughs> um, can't wait to see, oh, it was me. It's funny, when I teach this, sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, I saw it, and I thought it was crazy, and I'm like, mm, it's your psychic vision, like, this is all totally normal. Um, green, enthusiastic, opti uh, optimistic, growth, balance, and healer. Archangel Raphael, he's the master healer, he's green. You use green healing energy when you work with him, so if you're finding you have either you're healing and there's green energy or you are a healer and you have a lot of green energy in your aura. Um, white, to me, white can be clearing. Um, I think white can be healing. Um, there can be new energy, um, spiritual truth showing up. 
if any of you have ever had an aura picture, sometimes um, spirit guides and such will show up in your aura picture and you can literally see um, their energy, which is really cool. Um, black grays and browns can be more of like a blocked energy or fear type energy showing up in people. And I only want to share that with you because if you practice this enough, it's just funny to me. I think that you could see people like Crayola crayons. Like you could really get to the point where you walk around and you can see people's aura. I think most people don't do that because it would be a little distracting for me to be, you know, talking to whomever. And I'm like, oh, they're glowing orange or, oh, they're glowing yellow. Like it would probably throw me, even throw me off a little bit um, for that to, for that to happen. So if you're able to see your color, I want you just to, uh, of what I said, see if that kind of resonates with you where you're at. Pink, thank you. Pink um, is love. Pink is love energy. Pink is for people that maybe need love, but also that come from their heart space. And I hear Mother Mary works a lot with pink energy. And so if you have a lot of pink energy around you, that that could be, you know, she's, she's the mother, right? That's the way that we look at her. Am I yellow? Um, it's very possible because I've been in a learning mode. <laughs> I have a lot on my plate and I've been learning a lot. So um, generally pink around me. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, I have a lot of blue, hence I'm wearing blue. That's my other thing. And the spirit keeps me on track. Thank God. So something that I want to say to you, and then I'll tell you how I had to watch the clock too. Like spirits really stayed on me. Um, so when it comes to healing your aura, we can move energy out. And there's a couple of tools that I would like to share with you that I think are important because we are energetic beings and energetic maintenance is really important. Grief pain, loss, that's really heavy. And it can kind of sit on us like a, like a wet blanket. And so a couple of tools, sorry, I'm just like, I know I'm getting there. A couple of tools that we can use is you can imagine like a shower of white light running through you and running like around you. And imagine that it's just cleansing and clearing out your energetic field and clearing away the heavy stuff. So it makes room for more peace or more joy or more happiness to come in. When I take a shower at night, I imagine that I'm bathing in white light and the water just washes my energy clean. Um, if you are out of balance in some way, okay, I know many of you guys have had this experience just as I have. You go to the closet and you're like, I have nothing to wear. You might have 500 outfits and you're like, nothing, I don't want to wear any of that. Nothing is working for me. And what happens is that our soul is so wise, you know, way smarter than the human ego part of us. Um, we heal by the colors that we choose to wear every day. But those of you that wear black every single day probably isn't going to be the most supportive color for you. It may be showing how you feel, but if you want to shift up your energy, and I always love this little exercise, so I'm going to throw it out there. I want you guys to all close your eyes for one second. Take a nice deep breath in and let it out, okay? I'm going to ask you a question, and whatever comes to your mind, the first answer, you're not going to overthink it. You're just going to go with it, okay? What color is peace for you? Whatever color just popped in your head, blue, pink, red, yellow, purple, whatever, whatever just came in, that is what your body needs to help you find the vibration that is peace. So what you would do with that is you can just imagine breathing that in. You can imagine putting it on yourself in your energy field, but even wearing that color will help you connect with the vibration of peace. And I know um, probably every single person on the planet could use a little more <laughs> peace in their life. But if you go to your closet and you can't find something, it's because your soul, you need a different color to help yourself heal and balance for the day. So next time you go to your closet and you're like, oh, I have nothing to wear. It's because your soul's looking for a different color. So having a wide variety of colors is good. You know, a lot of people connect with like joy is yellow. So if yellow is not your color, have a little something yellow that you can put on your person. Um, and that will 
help affect, it affects your energy, color affects your energy. So now I'm watching the clock, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying Elizabeth, I'm trying. <laughs> okay, so to kind of expand on this, right? You're like, hmm, I saw my own color. This is so cool. What if I could see other people's colors? Cause we're all energy beings and you can't really, you can't hide that from people. So something that you can do to practice is you're gonna need another person. Hopefully you'll have some sort of volunteer. And what I want you to do is set up a room, softly lit room. If you can have a light yellow or white colored, cream colored wall in front of you, maybe even gray, light gray, that would be ideal. Have the light behind you and have the person sit by the wall. And you're gonna do kind of the same thing. You're gonna not look at them, but just look above them and just past them. And you're gonna breathe because every time we get into the psychic energy, if you're not used to it, you can kind of tense up and like, oh, I'm trying to make it happen. And that's not how it works. You have to relax and relax into it and allow it to unfold. You know, we wanna control everything, but you, you have to work and trust um, the universe and yourself in learning how to do this. And so you're just literally gonna kind of look past them and you're gonna look again for that shimmer. And when the shimmer comes up, you can ask them, just have them move real slow, just a little bit. And what will happen is you'll see like this trail of energy as they move their head like this. And you could ask them to like slowly put their arm up and you can just, as they move, it's like the color kind of follows them. And as you get really good with it, I have no doubt if you really want to, you could go out and you could just be like kind of, looking at somebody and waiting for their shimmer to show up and watch the move and see their color. I have seen it um, with mountains. So driving like at dusk, right before the sun goes down, you can kind of see like a shimmer um, maybe on the mountains. Um, you can practice with anything that's living, um, plants, your pets. Um, it's something I think that is, it's, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's learning that there are dimensions that we're not that familiar with that are absolutely available to us. And it's just like turning our dial just a tiny little bit in this whole other, whole other um, experience shows up for us. If you're seeing stuff and you're not comfortable with it, you can always imagine that you have a dial for seeing. You can just, I'm just going to turn that back down also because you may not want to walk in the room and you know see mom standing there at the kitchen and and she's in her spirit form so once you start to open up your ability to see things you're going to open up your ability to see lots of things um archangel michael is always going to be the one to ask to come in just to kind of oversee um what you're doing and um make sure that I mean, that's just how I'm trained that you have a supervisor overseeing what you're doing. So it's pretty amazing when you can, like I'll, I'll see orbs. So like, um, for me, if I'm not paying attention, cause I don't stay wide open all day long, <laughs> I only open up to spirit when I need to. And then I close back down so I can have a normal life. But if I spirit needs my attention, I'll just get a flash of blue. And for me, that's Archangel Michael and it always gets my attention. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> hi, yes, do you need something? Because, <laughs> you know, tingling my head doesn't always do it enough. So if you're seeing little sparkly lights, those are probably your angels. If you're seeing flashes of light, the first thing that comes to mind is going to be who it is. And I want you to really start to trust yourself that what you're experiencing is reality. And it's true because every single person can, can do this. Every single person has the ability and it just requires a little effort and a little understanding of, of how it works. And your kids are incredible. Your kids have placed you right here today, right here in uh, HPH and, and guided you to the right places. And I just feel so strongly because they want you to heal. They want you to connect. This is part of your spiritual journey and they've gotten you to the right place. So I'm glad that you guys listened and, um, are walking this journey with so many amazing other parents and beautiful, you know, speakers and, and Elizabeth and Irene holding space for you guys. And, um, you know, this is all of our life's purpose. And I'm just, 
honored that you guys let me talk for the last hour and share a little bit of knowledge about what I know um, in regards to talking in the spirit. So thank you guys for showing up today. You are amazing, Christine. And I just want to tell you that everyone is having so much fun. And there are lots Good. of people who can't stop smiling because you're so much fun to listen to. You can't have <laughs> help smiling when you're talking. And also, I just wanted to ask you, um, do our auras change colors throughout the day? Or is it something that stays uh, the same color? for uh, The auras, I believe that the auras do change. Um, I would say, I don't think that if like your primary, you have like a primary dominant color that, you know, you might start out as blue and all of a sudden you're yellow, like energy will come in. So you could have different energies within kind of like a, a dominant uh, energy. But I do believe as you shift and grow and change that your aura will shift and grow and change with you. So well, that was a great question. Saying thank you in the chat uh, box. I can't, I mean, I can't even tell you all of this. Uh, they're all saying how much fun it was. Love, love, <laughs> love, Christine. Uh, lots of people have had readings with you. Everyone knows you already. And a lot of people have taken this course at the conference. So they already are aware of this, but it's a lot of fun to have this refresher they're saying mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> saying about what a beautiful soul you are, which is of course oh, true. And, and so what I will do is send you the chat box so you can read everything thing because okay. no way that I, I would love that you everything that people are saying but um thank you for getting done so quickly we're gonna have you back if that's okay I hope you'll agree to come back and maybe do some of uh, this work with us every okay. single time I have so many things I want to share so oh, that's so kind of it. you and <laughs> so um let's go ahead Irene have you already unmuted everyone to be able to so if you guys yes. want to unmute yes. thank, you, Christine. thank you Christine this was wonderful uh, to Christine, Christine. That thank, you. thank you Thank you, so Christine. Thank you. She did a lot. So much, Christine. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Christine, it was so excellent. You are amazing. Thank you. You brought smiles to our faces today. You made it, Christine. Thank you. So glad I could make it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.